hi guys welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking in this video we're going to handle the fourth enterprise networking project on our list so basically in the previous projects we have managed to handle the first second and the third projects on our list and we said based on the complexity we'll be starting from a very simple project to a much complicated one okay as we proceed the more complicated they become okay so if you've not watched the first second and the third networking project on our list guys we have already recorded the video and i will leave a link on the description part of the video kindly click on the link watch the three projects then come back to this one because it's very very important you start from the basic to much complicated one okay and uh, also if you're new to this channel or even you have not subscribed to our channel guys kindly kindly we really plead with you support our channel click on the subscribe button like our video and leave a comment below okay thank you so much and let's begin basically we've been handling the projects from our clients or students okay and these projects normally come as a case study so we analyze the case study design a network and implement that network based on the requirement that is needed okay so on our fourth project guys you know consider it much complicated than the previous one and it will be less complicated than the next project okay so let's get to the business i have a case study here from a client you know it's a as you can see coursework brief albion university is a large university which has two campuses situated 20 miles apart the university students and staff are distributed in four faculties. These, these include the Faculty of Health and Science, Business, Engineering and Computing, and finally Arts and Design. Each member of staff has a PC, and students have access to PCs in the lab. Okay. Now the requirements. This is a case study that I received from my client. Okay. So these are the requirements. Create a network topology with the main components to support the following. In the main campus, we have three buildings, building A, B, and C. And under building A, we have how many departments? Administrative staff, HR, and finance. Then we are told that the admin pieces are distributed in the building offices, and it's expected that they will share some networking equipment. Okay? Then we have been told that int use villain is expected here. Okay. The faculty of business is also situated in this building. So basically building A will host how many departments? Four departments. Admin, administrative staff, HR, finance, and business departments. Okay. Then we go to building B. Under building B, we have how many departments? Faculty of Engineering and Computing and Faculty of Arts and Design, two departments. Then building C, how many departments do we have? Students labs and IT department. Then the IT department hosts the university web server and other servers, very important. Then there is also an email server hosted externally on the cloud, very important guys. Very, very important, main campus, okay? So let's go to the to branch campus or smaller campus. We have how many departments? We have Faculty of Health and Sciences, under which we have staff and students' labs are situated on separate floors. Very important. Then part B of the requirement, you will be expected to configure the core devices and few end devices to provide end-to-end -end con connectivity, I mean, and access to the internal and external servers. Okay? Each department or faculty is expected to be on its own separate network very important guys the switches should be configured with appropriate valence and security settings very important rib version 2 will be used to provide routing for the routers in the internal network and static routing for the external networks v for the external server i mean for the external server very important guys then the devices in building a will be expected to acquire dynamic ip addresses from a router based 
DHCP server. Okay, so these are our tasks. Your task is to plan, design, and prototype the network topology for Albion's network using Cisco Packet Tracer. Okay, configure in Packet Tracer the network with the appropriate setting to achieve the connectivity and functionalities specified in the requirements. Guys, very simple. Then part three, produce a report, not necessary here. Okay, so we will go with the with the two tasks, the first and the second task. Okay, and you know, the first task says we should plan, design, and prototype the network topology. Okay, based on the requirements. And we have been told that Albion University, you know, it has a, a main campus and a branch campus. And on a main campus, we have building building a building b and building c building a contains four departments admin hr finance and business building b contains only two departments building c also contains two departments as shown here then we've been told that there's an external email server okay on the cloud okay under small campus or brand campus we have only two departments as shown here okay then there are some protocols or other configuration that are required for this network to work okay all right guys so let's begin the task one of this case study plan design prototype the network topology okay i'll go back to our packet tracer and begin the decent part of our project okay guys so here we are on our packet tracer and we have the workspace here to begin the design part of the project okay so let me just open the case study again we have main campus and smaller campus and basically guys i'll start designing the main campus network okay all right so we have how many buildings building a b and c okay okay let me just go back to the packet tracer so guys you know we have been told to plan design and prototype the network topology okay so guys to plan a network it's always very important to know what kind of devices cables or other domains that you are gonna use in your topology okay and most importantly for a good network practice for good design practice of a network we should apply hierarchical model okay and for an hierarchical model guys we have core layer distribution layer and access layer at the core layer we should have a router or a layer 3 switch at the distribution layer we should have a layer 3 switch then at the access layer we should have access layer switch so hierarchical network design approach for this case okay Let's start main campus. So we have a router. We have a router here. And let's name this router main campus. All right. Then we've been told that, you know, we have departments and buildings. We have buildings that contains departments. Okay. And for hierarchical network design, we, might, we should need we should have a layer 3 switch here okay at the distribution layer so i will go and choose 3650 24 ps multi layer switch then say this one is main campus very important then we've been told that the main campus has three buildings the first building we have how many departments we have uh, four departments so uh, we will need a switch for each department that's the first department second department third department and fourth department so here we say this one is admin switch then here is hr hr this one is finance and finally this one is business sorry 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 business okay 
as indicated in our case study you know we have ad administrative staff we have hr finance and business so then we proceed to building b where we have two departments so layer two switches here let it be there and this there okay and let's say this one is uh, engineering and computing e and e e and c and this one is art and design this one is arts and design a and d okay that is building b very important guys step by step guys okay or right. another thing building c now building c student lab and it department okay then the it department host uh, university web servers that's later so we have two departments under building C as shown here. We have student labs and IT department. So this one is student lab. Let's say student lab. This one is IT department. IT. Okay. IT depth. Let's say that. Okay guys. And now also another important part. Another important part I mean. There is also an email server hosted externally on the cloud. Very important, guys. You know, there is an email server that is hosted externally on the cloud, guys. Guys, to approach this, we'll assume that there's another router on the cloud, okay? And those servers, the servers that uh, has been said here, the email server, as you can see, is connected to that router, okay? So let's include another router, 2911 router. And say this is cloud cloud router you know this is the cloud now okay and that server will be connected to this route okay all right guys so we said we'll be finishing on main campus first then we proceed to branch campus okay all right so let's go back again and now what's remaining is to include host devices host devices per department so for example at every department we'll have a pc and a printer pc and a printer is shown here pc and a printer Okay, guys so we are done placing all the devices as per the department as you can see the email server will be connected to the cloud okay then uh, as per the department you can see at least a pc and a printer then it department we were told to you know there are some servers okay for example there was a web server and another server ftp server okay so what i'll do is to connect the devices the first connection guys will be between the, this router and this router and we are gonna use serial connection okay all right so i want to show you something be very keen i'll click on connections then you choose serial dca you try to click on the router you don't see any serial interface guys so this is the most important part okay you know you must include the serial interface on this router how are we gonna do that click on the router then turn off this router there's a button here the zero is a button click on the zero then drag this module here the h w i c hyphen 2t okay place on an empty slot then turn on the route again and close this one then come to this route again guys turn off the router click the zero there then drag this module to an empty slot then turn on the route again and close that one and now if you try to click guys we'll see serial interfaces let's choose serial dc cable okay click that as you can see this one you click there and you come here you take that one okay all right so let's proceed with the connection of the remaining devices so this one will go here and guys i will do this one very fast to save time
Okay guys, as you can see, we are done connecting all the devices in the main campus network, okay? As per the requirement. And as you can see, we have a, a main campus router here. It's connected to the cloud and the cloud hosts a mail server, okay? And under main campus network, you know, we have various departments. For example, let me just separate the borders. We are told that there are buildings, building A, B, and C. So I'll try to separate the borders. Come here and uh, you choose no fill. Then you say this one is that one is uh, building A, very important. Then this one is building B, very important also. And finally, this one is building C, very, very important. okay and uh, this one is cloud okay all right so i'll just comment i'll just comment and say this is building a building a and i copy copy this one said building b b and this one is building c okay then you come here and say this one is the cloud sorry 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 shoot cloud okay and uh, something like a background borders background color uh oh building b and building c okay guys so pretty much simple we are going very very well so also guys you know under building hey we have how many departments four departments so i'll try to comment again so we have this the first department is called admin admin the second department is called hr the third department is called um finance and finally the fourth department is business okay and under building b we have only two departments also we do the same we do the same we do the same and uh, we do the same so let me adjust them very very fast so that we can move Right, so I'll comment which departments are these. So this is admin. Step by step, guys, quickly. So I'll do this one very fast. Okay, guys, as you can see, we have we have. Uh, specified which departments are these and now a background fill color i'll do it also we'll fill the background color okay i will choose uh, let me choose uh, i'll choose pink color this one so this is admin hr finance business department Le engineering and computing arts and design student lab and it department very very important okay guys okay guys let me go up and see what's many let me okay that's also very important there so basically guys what's remaining what's remaining guys this is a main campus network so let's connect it to so let's connect it to a branch network guys for a branch network guys obviously we should have a router we should have a 2911 router so let's read the case study again 
Faculty of Health and Sciences, only two departments, but we are going to use a hierarchical network module. Okay, so this is let's say this is a uh, um, branch branch route. Okay, branch campus route still the same thing, right? And it should connect to. And you know, for a rocket call network design, we should have a layer 3 switch at the distribution layer. Then, you know, access layer, we should have layer 2 switches. And we have been told that there are only two departments, meaning we will we will only have two access layer switches. Let's say one is here and another one is there. Okay. And uh, let's say this one is... Uh, mm, branch l3 switch and now you know let me go back we have student staff and student labs departments under branch campus network okay so this is staff let's say that staff and this is a uh, student lab student lab lb okay okay and now let's give the host devices as per department student lab and a printer and the printer here and let me see the case study again okay okay no problem it's okay then stuff we have a pc and a printer okay all right so let's connect these devices also the first connection guys we are going to connect this router here to this router you seeing which connection serial cable connection okay and you know we said that by default this router here you won't get the serial interfaces now you must add those serial interfaces to the routers okay we are we have already did to this one so let's do to the branch campus router you click on the router you turn it off click zero then you drag this hwic fn 2 t then turn on the router again close it and now let's connect the two routers using serial dce cable okay take this one and this one will take this that one i mean okay so let's connect the devices on the branch network okay guys so we have connected the devices on the branch network side and basically what we're going to do we're going to separate the borders and say that this is branch network this is H, I mean main network main campus network so that is there this is branch network so we will say that this is a branch network let me comment Albion branch Albion Albion branch network Albion campus branch network and uh, this one should be Albion campus main sorry it should be albion branch campus network so here should be let me just delete that one albion main campus network right and this one should be albion branch campus network not campus branch network that's a wrong english branch yeah so we are done let's do the boundaries and i'll select yellow color uh -huh. so this is albion main campus network albion branch campus network so basically what's remaining let me check oh on this on this side you know we've been told that let me go back to this case study it's faculty of health and sciences 
okay all right so let me just go and draw another boundaries here no fill and say say faculty of health and sciences contains how many departments we have uh, two department the first one is that one okay and uh, the second one is this one and the second one is this one sorry all right so i'll adjust these devices okay so this is faculty of health and sciences i'll, I'll comment health and sciences and this one was stud staff staff department and this one should be student lab lab will be just like that and you do this one take it somewhere there okay then the boundaries for this one and this one and you take this for this here and uh, let's choose uh, this one for this and uh, this okay so yeah, just it again all right guys so as you can see guys i believe our design has met the requirement okay as you can see the main campus should have three buildings a b c and the branch campus should have only two departments and remember in the main campus each building has several departments and that has been implemented successfully on our packet as you can see okay so basically guys let's finish with the comments part so such that when we start configuring such that when we start the configuration part we won't comment anything okay all right let me proceed you are expected to configure the code devices and few end devices to provide end-to-end -end connectivity and access to the internal and external servers each department should is expected to be on its own separate IP network very important guys the switches should be configured with the appropriate valence and security settings very important the two the two are comments that we're gonna include let's command the two we've been told that each department should be in a different network okay so let's assume admin department it should be in a different VLAN and a different network so let's say admin is in VLAN VLAN 10 and the network should be 192 sorry 192.168.1.0 slash 24 very important guys then you copy you come to hr department and you paste the same thing then here vlan 20 let's say hr department is in vlan 20 then the network is 2.0 slash 24 then finance department same thing vlan 30 vlan 30 3.0 then business department should be in vlan 40 4.0 so let me do this one very very fast okay so on the branch network also we, we are going to do the same thing let's say this is vlan uh, 100 vlan 100 a network of 10.0 then this is VLAN 90, VLAN 90, 90, a network of uh, 9.0, 9.0, okay guys, so basically I think we have uh, included all the comments that is, all the comments that are necessary, and uh, what I'll do is to at least fill the background color of uh, the comments that we've just included right now, and I'll use, uh, let's use green, for this case 
click OK. Then you come and draw for villain 90, draw for villain 100, that is branch network. Then you come to main network, draw here. Okay guys, so basically guys, we are done with the comment part. So what's remaining? Okay, the networks between the routers. It's always very important to include the networks between the routers. Okay. Alright, so I'll include the network between the routers. Let's say this is 10.10.10.0 slash 30 because there are only two interfaces. And then I'll come back this side and say this is uh, 10.10.10.4 slash 30 you know subnetting I, I believe you already know how these things are coming okay and let's use the server to be 20.0.0.0 slash 30 okay subnetting very very simple guys all right and I'll draw the boundaries for the network comments I'll use the same background color okay Okay, and finally here, by finally here. So we are done with the this planning, design, and the producing a prototype that fulfills the requirement, guys. So guys, if you look keenly this design, guys, there's nothing that we lack. Basically, everything is included, and everything is explained. As you can see, building A, we have these departments. Building B, we have these departments. With the network and VLAN also, and so on and so forth, guys. All right, guys. So, basically, let's get into the configuration part. Okay, guys. So, let's begin the configuration part of the project. So, I'll go back to the case study and see what we should start with. So guys, basically, the first configuration that we are going to make here, you know, to turn these interfaces up, you know, by default, the router's interfaces are in shutdown state. So that's the first interf So that's the first configuration that we are going to do to make this network look at least very beautiful. So I'll start with this router here. And uh, let me check. Enable config t then interface gig 0 shot 0 no shutdown good right so another interface interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 no shutdown another interface is 0 slash 1 slash 1 then no shutdown then do right okay so we're done with this router here. Let's go to this router here and do the same. No. Interface gig. Sorry, 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 sorry. Enable. Config T. Then interface gig 0 slash 0. No shut. Another interface is uh, interface serial. Serial. Let me check. Let me check. Serial. This one serial zero one zero interface interface serial zero one zero then no shut and uh, do right okay then you go to the third router here we we'll say here no config t and enable config t then interface gig 0 slash 0 no shut okay then another one is interface serial let me check again serial uh, serial 0 2 0 serial 0 2 0 then no shut do right then finally Let's turn on the layer 3 switch. 
by default the layer 3 switch is turned off okay so we must plug in an AC power supply to make it home okay so click on the layer 3 switch and if you try to go to CLI you see you will find this warning device must be powered home okay so what to do just drag this AC power supply to an empty slot then close that one give it time you will see all the interfaces turning to green also this one you do the same thing and you close guys so let's go back to this one as you can see they are they have now turned from red to orange and from orange to green very 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 important guys very important and as you can see guys now the links between the routers are showing a green indicators okay all right so also the most important part guys you know we've used a serial dca cable and for a serial dca cable when you connect it to a device there is a part that comes as a serial dca okay for example when we used a serial dca cable between this router and this router one part of the cable should be a serial DC heat and on that part guys we should configure a clock rate okay to enable traffic to flow through that cable okay right so to know which interface is a serial DC heat interface guys just over over that the, the serial cable and which side has a clock before serial interface i mean the serial comment for example this one you see a clock here and a serial meaning the interface here is a serial dc interface okay let's check this one also this one is also a serial dc interface this one is not because it doesn't have a clock this one is not because it doesn't have a clock so we must set a clock rate on this interface and this interface to enable traffic to flow through those interfaces or the cables all right okay click here so exit interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 1 you say clock rate uh, specify 64,000 okay another interface is serial you know then clock rate should be 64,000 and do right exit okay so guys as you can see our design is looking pretty much simple and uh, you know it's uh, very beautiful okay everything is green green although we've not configured much on the routers switches and the devices and let's begin and let's now begin the configuration on the layer 2 switches we begin configuring from layer 2 switch to layer 3 switch then to the routers okay access layer distribution layer and the core layer okay so let's let me see VLANs we will begin with the VLAN configuration okay so how are we going to configure VLANs we are only going to configure VLANs on the layer 3 layer 2 switches access layer switches okay and also here so this switch here all interfaces should be in vlan 10 as specified here as you can see vlan 10 okay this switch here all the interfaces should be in vlan 20 okay so guys basically configuration i'll do configuration here and here well explaining such that the remaining one I can go very fast to save time okay so I'll click on this switch you come to CLI CLI I mean and you say enable then config T interface range you know we always use interface range when you want to configure the same parameter on many interfaces multiple interfaces 0 slash 1 224 okay switch port mode access then switch port access vlan 10 okay then do right 
Okay. All right. So I'll proceed to the next device. So I'll just do something here. Notepad. You know, there are many switches and basically we're going to configure almost the same thing. So we say interface range FA0-1224. Then you hit enter. Switch port. Switch, switch port mode access. Then switch port access VLAN 20. So I'll copy this one. Copy. I hope uh, everything is right. So for admin switch, it's done. So we proceed to HR switch of which we'll do the same thing. Enable config T. HR switch should be in VLAN 20 and the configuration I've already copied here. So what I'll do, paste, hit enter, do right. And now we go to finance switch. We click on the side finance switch and uh, enable config T. Then the con we just modify this one and say here yeah, it's now 30. Mark call copy and uh, paste. Do right. Okay. Then we go to VLAN 40. 40. Let me include do right here. Then exit. Okay. Copy. We go to the fourth switch okay business switch then you say enable on 50 then i hope you have um, changed uh, let me see okay villain 40 that's okay then you paste good close this one you come to the fifth switch which is uh, engineering and electric and computing i mean then config t I go back to the configuration and change here to 50. Copy. Then I paste here. I close this one. I change this to 60. I mark all, then copy. I come to the sixth switch and I enable config T. Uh, you paste. You close this one. You come to seventh switch. Then you come here and modify it to be 70. Mark all, copy. Come to CLI of the seventh switch, enable. Config T. Then you paste. You close this one. You modify for the eighth switch. Copy all. You come to the last switch under the main compass network. Enable. Config T. Okay. And uh, you know. You paste. I hope it's been an eight. Good, 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 good. Okay, guys, you know, we've made all the ports in the access layer switches to be in access mode, and we have assigned those ports to various VLAN. For example, this port to VLAN 10, this one to VLAN 20, and so on and so forth. So, the connecting port from layer 3 switch should also be. An access port having the same VLAN as the connecting the corresponding layer to switch. For example, this port here, which is a phase 0 slash 1, is connected to gig 102. And this port here is an access port accessing VLAN 10. So this one also should be an access port accessing VLAN 10 same guys very simple guys very very simple okay i'll go and say no enable config t good so interface interface say interface gig 102 gig 102 sorry 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 gig 1 0 slash 2 then switch port mode access okay 
then switch port access vlan 10 very 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 good then you exit then you come to the next interface so this interface here this one is connected to gig 103 okay and so gig 103 should access vlan 20 because the char is in vlan 20 as you can see as you can see okay so let me do this 03 switch port mode access then switch port mode access vlan 20 okay exit you go to another interface so this one should be in vlan 30 so guys let me do that one very fast because uh, you know i believe you have understood how to do that Okay guys, so we have con configured VLANs to this switch. All, all these interfaces of the multi-layer switch have accessed a VLAN that is corresponded to the connecting plan. Okay? Correcting department, okay? For example, this FA gig zero gig one zero nine have accessed VLAN eight. Very simple guys i hope you have understood that one okay so let's proceed to did, did i save really okay okay very important let's proceed to branch campus network the first thing we configure access layer distribution layer then finally to call layer so i'll go there and uh, say this one enable config t and now we have con configuration copied here. That one should be VLAN 100. You mark call, copy. Sorry, 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 sorry. You copy, then you paste. Good, you close that one. And now you modify this to 90. So VLAN 90, copy. Sorry, 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 sorry. Copy. And you come to this switch here and say enable config t and you paste so vlan's configuration on the access layer switch switches are done okay such that all the interfaces of this switch are in vlan 100 all the interfaces of this switch are on vlan 90 and we said when we are conf while we are configuring this layer 3 switch that the connecting interface should have the same VLAN number as per the department okay so for example this one is uh, gig 03 this is gig 02 so gig 02 should be in VLAN 20 90 I mean so interface say in no enable config t so interface gig z gig let me check it's gig 102 it's a uh, sorry it's a uh, it's a uh, sorry 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 it's gig 102 switch mode access then switch port access vlan 90 exit then we go to gig 103 switch port mode access then switch port mode switch port access vlan 100 okay exit and do right and guys also the most important part guys you know these devices will need to communicate with the main campus network okay you know they have vlan numbers so for them to communicate they will be going from the various departments to this layer three switch then to the route okay but you know an access port cannot access more than one vlan so if this is a 
an access port, all these VLANs will not be able to communicate. Will not be able to be transported via this connection. Okay. So meaning this port here on layer 3 switch must be a trunk port such that all the VLANs will be transported to the router. Okay. So let's make gig 101 a trunk port. Click on the layer 3 switch again. Then you say interface gig 101. Let me check it again. Gig 101 here. Yeah. And you hit enter. Then switch port. You know, in layer 3 switch, guys, how to configure trunk interface is a little bit different. You just type switch port trunk encapsulation. Okay? Then dot one Q. Switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. And you hit enter. Then switch port mode trunk. And you hit enter. Then exit do right okay so we are done configuring everything on access layer and the distribution layer of the branch campus network so let's configure this interface to be a trunk interface because you know we have almost eight VLANs here and we'll be, they will be passing through this interface if that interface is an access interface they won't pass okay so we have to make it a trunk interface click and say interface gig let me check it gig one one gig one zero one then switch port we say how to configure trunk on a layer three switch switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q then switch port mod trunk very simple and hit enter exit do right oh guys basically we are done with access and distribution layer configuration there we have configured the we have configured both access and distribution layer okay so basically the configuration that are remaining are on these routers here the three routers okay so let's go back to our case study guys it's step by step i hope you understand how i am going through this problem in a much simplified way step by step when you start configuring start from the access layer you move to distribution layer and finally the core layer okay all right so what are we going to configure here rip version 2 okay and the http server right and you know we will need the devices to communicate but you know by default devices in different VLANs cannot communicate so we must implement inter-VLAN routing okay before that let's go back to this router before that we need to configure an IP address to this interface this one and this one then this one and this one but this one in the, this interface we won't configure an IP address to this interface we will create some other sub interfaces to assign IP address because how many department does it have? Eight. Okay. Meaning, if you assign an IP address to this interface, you know, only one department will access this interface. So we need to create sub interfaces on this interface. Okay. Then also here we need to assign IP address to this interface. Then we don't assign IP address to this interface because we will create sub interfaces for each department okay all right so let's begin configuring ip address to this interface this one this one this one this one and uh, and this one okay so i'll start with the main campus router click on the main campus router and say enable then config t okay then this interface should be uh, 0011 interface serial zero one one then ip address ten dot ten dot ten dot one submit mask of two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five, five, dot two, five two as you can see this is the network okay so the first valid host id will be dot one 
the second valid OSI ID will be dot true. Only those two because the subnet mask is start notation. Very important subnetting. Then you hit enter, exit. Then you go to the second interface, which is this one, zero, zero, one, zero. Interface is zero, one, zero. Then IP address should be in this network. This is a network. 10.10.10.4 is a network slash 30 subnetting very important so the first valid OSI ID will be dot 5 and another one will be dot 6 only those two so let's let this one take dot 5 and this one will take dot 6 so I click and say IP address should be 10.10.10.5 okay exit and do right so we're done configuring IP address for this to these interfaces this one we have left pending because of some underlying reason that uh, we will see later so let's assign IP address to this interface also 0020 enable config t then interface serial 020 hit enter then IP address should be 10 dot 10 sorry 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 dot 10 dot so if this one took dot one, this one must take dot two because there are only two valid OSI ID. Why? Subnet mask of should have started notation. Subnetting very important. Dot two, then subnet mask is two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two. Hit enter and exit. Do right. So we're done because it has only one interface that we need to configure an IP address. The other one is for intervillian routing okay so let's go to this router here for this router we're going to configure two interfaces this one and this one okay all right so enable config t all right so which interface is this serial zero one zero so interface serial zero one zero then ip address should be in this network so this one took dot five this one must take dot six i mean this one sh should take dot six okay so it is a ten dot ten dot ten dot six subnet mask of two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two and you hit enter exit then you go to this interface which is the interface gig zero slash zero then IP address IP address should be twenty dot twenty sorry 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 dot zero dot zero dot one should I start a notation okay subnet mask of two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two and you hit enter exit and do right so you know we have assigned an IP address to this interface and this interface so meaning this interface will act as the default gateway to the server here okay so we must assign IP address to this server statically I click on the server then you come to desktop IP configuration and you start configuring IP address which is 20.0.0.2 because the default gateway took dot one okay copy that subnet mask should be dot five five two five five dot two five five dot two five two as you can see should I start in notation okay then now the default gateway should be the IP address that router's interface this one okay and let's try to ping it we have saved it so let's try to ping if it will ping the default gateway ping good so it's done guys basically what's remaining guys is to configure DCP server and intervillian routing. For those two configurations, we are going to do them on this router and on only this router. Then finally, we are going to configure a routing protocol, RIP version 2 and a static route. Okay? Let's start with the with this router here. Okay? This one. I'll click on the router and start configuring intervillian routing and DCP server. You know, those two things always go hand in hand, okay? So, to start configuring,
let's start with the intercooler routing then finally we do for the ACP server configuration so I click on the switch and start configuring intercooler routing how do we configure intercooler routing we create sub interfaces for example this interfaces this interface here is gig 00, zero. so we create sub interface on gig 00, zero that correspond to the VLAN ID okay for example it's always recommended like that okay so for example interface gig 0 slash 0 dot 90 for VLAN 90 here see here okay and you hit enter now encapsulation you enter this command dot 1q the VLAN ID 90 very simple guys 90 90 90 okay and hit enter and now IP address the IP address of this sub interface will act as the default gateway okay when we are configuring the CP server don't forget this part guys the IP address of this sub interface will act as when we are configuring the CP server for Villa 90 okay so IP address 192.168.9.0 okay separate mask of 255.255.255.252 no 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 dot zero okay class c it's class c okay and you hit enter exit then another sub interface which is a uh, dot 100 like this one for this vlan okay and you hit enter then encapsulation dot 1q 100 then IP address should be 10.1 10.1 okay exit do right so we are done configuring intervillian routing on this switch the branch campus switch so basically what's remaining let's configure the GP server such that these devices on these departments can be allocated IP address dynamically how are we gonna do that how to configure the GP server the first command the first command I mean is to enable that service you know you know sometimes this CP service might be disabled on a router so it's your job to enable it but on the Cisco routers I believe mostly packet tracer they are enabled by default so suppose they were not enabled just type this command service DHCP and hit enter and now what are we gonna do guys there are things that we call pools okay we create pools for example this was student lab staff this was this was staff this is student lab so we create pools as per the department okay IP DHCP pool okay staff staff pool okay hit enter for this department okay a pool for this department very simple guys kindly it's very simple then you are saying a network to this pool network it's 192.168.9 this network now this one don't forget 9.0 okay then the subnet mask which is uh, 255.255.255.0 .255 class c address okay then now default router default gateway the default router should be the IP address of that sub interface that we created it was 192.168.9.1 I believe you remember that guys then DNS should also be 192.168.9.1 and exit do right so let's test oh we have not uh, configured the CP server for student lab department so we create another pool that will be called IP this is CP pool student student lab lab like that pool we create another pool for this department here the student lab department I believe you understand these things guys and you hit enter you sign a network to that pool so here the network was 10.0 okay 10.0 then the default gateway was the an IP address to that sub interface we created which was 10.1 okay default router default gateway 10.1 
DNS let's make it uh, similar to default router 10.1 guys please don't forget exit and now do right guys let's test the configuration we go we are going to test if these devices are located ip address dynamically for example i'll go to and gcp let's give it time requesting ip address for dcp request successful it uh, took uh, 9.2 because 9.1 was taken by default router remember now let's test on the other side also and remember we have configured intervillian routing meaning these devices the, the, the devices on VLAN 100 should be able to communicate the devices on VLAN 90 and as you can see the DCP configuration here was successful so I'll try to ping 9.2 give it time leave it will successfully ping as you can see dcp server and intervening routing configuration is successfully okay so let's go back to the branch i mean the main campus network so this is where we have a lot of work you know we have almost how many departments eight departments so we need to create how many pools eight pools plus eight sub interfaces i'll go and try i'll do for the first two so that the remaining one i can go first to save time enable config t so mm -hmm. we create sub interface for you know inter we start with the interval routing first so interface gig zero slash zero dot 10 because you know admin admin was in vlan 10 okay all right okay and you hit enter then encapsulation dot one q 10 network ip i mean ip address should be this one dot one okay one and two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one subnet mask of two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero okay and it turns up exit you create another you create another sub interface for hr okay so encapsulation i mean interface gig zero 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 zero, zero dot twenty okay then encapsulation dot one q twenty and then uh, ip address should be two dot one and exit so guys let me go faster for the remaining six departments to save time okay okay guys so we managed to configure intervillian routing for all these vlans okay so meaning after we have assign ip address to these devices they will be able to communicate okay so let's configure dcp server you start with intervillian routing then you configure dcp server okay step by step guys so you know we also have eight departments here so meaning we'll create eight pools we'll create eight pools on this router okay and each pool you know will be the name will be as uh, here for example admin pool hr pool so on so forth okay so let me do for the first two while explaining such that the remaining six i can go first to save time i believe you understand what i mean so how do we configure dcp server okay it's very simple we said you enable the service service dhcp then you create the pools ip dhcp dcp pool admin pool let's say admin pool for this one don't forget pool then you send a network network of 1 and 2 dot 168 let me show you yeah 168 168 dot 1 dot 0 submit mask of 255 dot 255 
255.0.0. Delete enter. Default router should be 192.168.1.1. Guys, don't forget that. DNS should also be 192.168.1.1. And uh, exit. Then let's create another pool for HR. IPDCP pool. Attached to the HR pool. HR pool. Okay. And the network, you assign a network to this pool, which is 2.0. 2.0. And then default router. Default router should be that IP address of the sub interface we created, guys. Don't forget that. Because if you get that, if you forget that, nothing will work. It. all right so for the remaining six guys let me do it very fast to save time i hope you have understood how to configure dcp server on this two explanation okay all right another pool Okay guys, so we are done configuring DCP server and interval and routing on this router. Okay? Meaning these devices under main campus network will be able to communicate to each other. Okay? So let me go to this PC here and try to check if the DCP configuration is successful. Uh -huh. Let me wait for it. Good. 8.1 uh, 8.2 with the other parameters that successfully this one. Let's just give do that and wait. Uh, we'll do this and wait. We we'll close. Uh, we have done. Let's do this and wait. Uh, do this and wait to see if they have been assigned IP address dynamically. We'll do this and wait. We'll do this and wait. We'll do this very very fast to make it very very fast do this and wait so let's start checking on this one this one took uh, 7 or 2 as you can see there and this one took uh, 6.2 as you can see there this one should take 5.2 as you can see there and this one should take 4.2 as you can see there this one should take 3.2 as you can see there this one 2.2 as you can see and this one 1 or 2 I mean as you can see there guys DCP server configuration is successful so what I'll do guys is to test intervillian routing intervillian routing enables devices in different VLANs to communicate so I'll try to ping from this PC to 8.2 this one this one is 1.2 as you can see and I'll try to ping 8.2 which is this PC okay okay so let me click that and try to ping 192.168.8.2 and you hit enter. Give it time, guys. The first packet might always fail, but the subsequent ones will be successful. As you can see, DCP server configuration is perfectly working together with interval and routing, guys. So, guys, basically, we have configured DCP server interval routing VLANs. And what else? The host devices. Okay. So basically, what's remaining, guys, is to configure routing protocol to enable devices from this side to communicate with the devices on this side, guys. And we've been told to use RIP version two. Okay. Very simple, guys. Very very simple. You know, by default. This, these devices will not be able to communicate with these devices. Let's try. This one is uh, uh, 10.2. So I'll try to ping. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. What am I doing now? So let me try to ping from PC0 here to 10.2. Here, from this one. This one is 1.2. So I'll try to ping 10.2, which is in a branch network. So I'll go here and try to ping 10.2. 
destination host and reachable. It cannot be because we have not applied routing protocol. Even 9.2 will not communicate. Okay, so what do we do, guys? Let's implement RIP version 2 routing information protocol. Okay, in this router here, we are going to implement RIP to advertise how many networks three networks this network this network and this network okay this one this one and this one so let's begin enable config the first command guys to make the router aware that it's using RIP routing protocol to advertise routes okay then which version of RIP should be version 2 okay then the networks now very simple it's a 192.168.9.0 without subnet mask you just hit enter another one is 10.0 and finally that one was 10 10 10 10 10 network should be 10 10 dot 10 10 dot 0 hit enter exit do right guys we have done configuring rip on this router almost everything we have done configuring on that router okay all right all right all right so let's go to this router here to configure rip version 2 okay don't worry about this one this normally happens when you don't execute the range of ip address that should not be assigned to the host devices okay but when you exclude that kind of range you know you won't see these warnings okay all right but it will it have no effect it has no effect on our configuration so let's configure it version 2 on main campus router so make the router aware that it's using rip and it's rip version 2 network you have 10 networks here guys <laughs> we have to advertise how many networks on this router 10 1 2 plus the 8 that's 10 very very tiresome 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 0 then another is 10 dot 10 dot, uh, dot 4 then 192 so let me just begin 192 dot 168 dot 1.0 then another one is 2.0 another one is 3.0 dot 0 5.0 6.0 8.0 7.0 I mean and finally 8.0 okay exit and do right so guys we have configured a routing protocol on this router and this router so let's try to communicate again remember the first time to it we, we tried to communicate it was destination host and reachable because we didn't configure a routing protocol as you can see here it was all destination host and reachable so let's try to ping again the same 9.2 what's happened what's happened and now let's try to ping 10.2 again What's happened? Reply successful. Routing information protocol has been configured successfully. Rip. So let's set ping from this PC to even 4.2. Ping 4.2, which is uh, located on the main compass network. Let's give it time. The first rocket might fail, but the subsequent one, I believe, they won't fail. What's happening, guys? That's very successful, guys. Our configuration are working perfectly fine. So basically, what's remaining here? Basically, oh, we have not configured routing protocol on this router. Let me just do it very fast. Enable, then config t, config t, then router rip version two. Sorry, 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 version two. Then network 
the first one should be 20.0.0.0 hit enter the second one should be 10.10.10.4 here the direct connected networks this one and this one okay and hit enter is it do right and now let's test our configuration let's try to ping this server okay the server was uh, 20.0.0.2 i'll try to ping the server from albion branch campus network this pc here try to ping uh, uh, should be ping 20.0.0.2 20 to zero. Okay, see guys, successful guys. Everything is working perfectly fine, guys. Okay, so I believe, guys, you know, with this network design and implementation, let's go back to the case study. You know, I believe we have implemented almost everything. Okay, we've implemented almost everything, and for the coursework, you know, it was 70 percent. So imagine everything is working as expected you've garnered all the marks even if you don't garner all of them but i believe you are 60 and above over 70. okay so basically guys that will mark the end of this project and the guys we really need your support we, st we still haven't got enough subscribers so guys we depend on you for your support don't close the video before you subscribe to our channel guys it's very important that you promote us as we promote each other we work for you we want the best for you we're doing the best for you guys so that you can have a full understanding how to approach any enterprise network project so this project guys was very very important guys it was very very important it's one of the best projects that we have ever recorded and everything is working perfectly fine all the points are explained in a very simplified manner that even a baby can understand so who are you man who are you my sister this opportunity for you follow us for the next projects you'll find good projects on our page share with your friends so that they can also benefit and lastly buy and see again the next project thank you